فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما ينفعنا ولا تجعل فيما علمتنا وبالا علينا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم فاطر السماوات والارض عالم الغيب والشهاده انت تحكم بين عبادك فيما كانوا فيه يختلفون اهدني لما اختلف فيه من الحق باذنك انك تهدي من تشاء الى صراط مستقيم brothers and sisters ان شاء الله تعالى today i want to respond to some of the um points that were brought forward by some individuals regarding a debate which I did 11 months ago taqriban or even a year ago and I heard two individuals from those who uh commented on that video one being Abu Khadija and the other one being uh, Abdilillah and when i listened to both of them i listened to it attentively but what i sensed from both of them is ignorance and lack of comprehension of the religion of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now that might be a a very Uh, general statement but inshallah ta'ala i will uh, bring the uh, points to support that inshallah ta'ala but what i also uh, felt from the two of the brothers is that they were ascribing to madhhab salaf that which they are free from kabara'at dhib من دم ابن يعقوب that which مذهب السلف is free from and that is really the motive that actually really made me want to show the listeners that the point that they brought forward by saying that the salaf never debated the people of innovation that it's كذب وافتراء it's a lie upon the ummatu salaf rahimahumullah jami'an and other points that inshallah ta'ala i will deal with it in this video inshallah ta'ala but i also the third thing that i also sense from the brothers is they were unfair in the way that they pointed out the debate or that they spoke about it mainly abu khadija he drew the debate as though it was a place which i was uniting with the people of innovation that i wanted to become friends with them and then after that he refuted what he had brought forward and that reminds me of the arab saying a hashafa wa su'a kila are you going to sell to me bad dates and then are you also going to be unfair in the way you scale it you make up that i went there to unite with the innovators you make up that i want to become friends with the innovators and based on that you bring all those um points out which is 
The Salaf never used to sit with the innovators and they never befriended the innovators. But the muqaddima is what we disagree upon. Put the natija aside. Ahashafan wasu akila. And all of that didn't really make me want to respond to it again. Because Allah wa ta'ala said in the Quran, خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ خُذِ الْعَفْوَ Take forgiveness with you. And call to the good. And command the good. And turn away from the ignorant ones. And the poet also said, سَكَتُّ عَنِ السَّفِيهِ فَظَنَّ أَنِّي عَيَيْتُ عَنِ الْجَوَابِ وَمَا عَيَيْتُ إِذَا نَطَقَ السَّفِيهُ فَلَا تُجِبْ فَخَيْرٌ مِنْ إِجَابَتِهِ السُّكُوتُ I became silent from the dim-witted one. And so he thought based on that, that I was unable to reply back. If the dim-witted one talks, don't reply back to him. فَخَيْرٌ مِنْ إِجَابَتِهِ السُّكُوتُ It is better you are silent than to reply back to him. Also the other poet he said, وَلَوْ كُلُّ كَلْبٍ عَوَى أَلْقَمْتَهُ حَجَرًا لَأَصْبَحَ الصَّقْرُ مِثْقَالًا بِدِينَارِي If every dog that howled and barked, you threw a, a stone at it, then that dog in which you keep throwing the stone at, it will become, it will make the stones valuable. Every dog who howled and barked, if you threw a stone at it, the stone will turn into gold. It will become valuable like the gold. The poet he also said, إِذَا بْتُلِيتُ بِجَاهِلٍ مُتَحَامِلٍ يَجِدُ الْمَحَالَ مِنَ الْأُمُورِ صَوَابًا أَوْ لَيْتُهُ مِنِّ السُّكُوتُ وَرُبَّمَا كَانَ السُّكُوتُ عَلَى الْجَوَابِ جَوَابًا If I'm tested, with the ignorant one who's directing attacks at me, who finds the things that are the impossible, he finds them to be right, I respond by being silent. Hoping, inshallah ta'ala, that my silence will be a reply to him. As I said to you, brothers and sisters, that their points that they brought forward or whatever they said, it really stems from ignorance and lack of understanding of the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ignorance stands on four pillars. And whenever these four pillars are present within a person, then definitely hasala lahu halak That this person, destruction, has taken place on him. And its pillars are Al-Kibru, arrogance. وَهُوَ يَمْنَعُ صَاحِبُهُ مِنَ الْإِنْقِيَادِ لِلْحَقِّ And arrogance prevents a person from submitting to the truth. The second one is Al-Hasad, jealousy and envy. وَهُوَ يَمْنَعُ صَاحِبُهُ مِنْ قَبُولِ النُّصْحِ It prevents the person from accepting the advice that's given to him. وَبَذْلِ الْخَيْرِ and the third one is al-ghadab, anger. The person gets angry. صَاحِبُهُ مِنَ الْعَدْلِ It prevents the person from being just. And the fourth one is al-shahwa, desires. وَهِيَ تَمْنَعُ مِنَ الصَّبْرِ وَالْعَفَافِ وَالْعِبَادَةِ And the fourth one is shahwa, desire. It prevents the person from being patient and chast and also ibadah. And... Those four that I mentioned, which are the pillars of Jahl, for you to try to get rid of those four and to remove it from somebody, it is harder than try to move in a mountain. وَزَوَالُ الْجِبَالِ عَنْ أَمَاكِنِهَا أَيْسَرُ مِنْ زَوَالِ هَذِهِ الْأَرْبَعَةِ عَمَّنْ أُصِيبَ بِهَا Trying to move a mountain from its place is easier than to try to remove these four from a person who's been afflicted with it. 
And these brothers, their opposition to my actions or the way I spoke only came from this opposition of theirs has only come from their ignorance of what is Madhab al-Salaf. What was the methodology of the pious predecessors? And that which our Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his companions were upon. Imam Muhammad said, وَإِنَّمَا جَاءَ خِلَافُ مَنْ خَالَفَ The opposition of the one who opposes only occurs because of لِقِلَّةِ مَعْرِفَةٍ بِمَا جَاءَ عَنِ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ Because of his little understanding of that which has come from the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم وَقِلَّةِ مَعْرِفَةٍ بِصَحِيحِهَا نَسْقِيمِهَا And their little understanding of what is authentically transmitted from the Messenger and that which is fabricated and weak that is ascribed to the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم My advice to those brothers is التفقه في الدين have understanding of this religion and the hadith of Mu'awiyah ibn Abi Sufyan radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma which Bukhari and Muslim both narrated which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said man yuridi allahu bihi khayra yufaqihu fi deen and when Allah wants good for him he makes him understand the religion this hadith should be a and a good advice for you guys. It should benefit you, inshallah ta'ala, ala hayatikum al ilmiya. In the path where you guys are seeking knowledge and you're learning, this hadith should be something you hold on to. That if Allah wants good for you, He makes you understand the religion. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah commented on this hadith and he brought a fa'idah out, a benefit. Ibn, Qa- Ibn Taymiyyah he said Al-fiqhu fi deen Fahmu ma'ani al-amri wal-nahi Liyastabsir al-insanu fi deenihi Ala tara qawluhu ta'ala Liyatafakahu fi deeni Wali yunziru qawmahum Iza raja'u ilayhim la'allahum yahdharun Faqarana al-inzara bil-fiqh Ibn Taymiyyah said To understand this religion it means To understand that which Allah commands to understand that which the Messenger commands, to understand that which Allah wa ta'ala prohibits, to understand that which the Messenger وسلم, prohibits, so you can have a person, can have an insight within their religion. And then he said, don't you see that which Allah has said subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah At-Tawbah, Ayah 122, fi dini, so they can comprehend their religion and that they can warn their people when they come back from the battle that group who stayed back who were studying when the Mujahideen come back they can teach them the religion they can warn them because they were the ones who were studying فَقَرَنَ الْإِنْذَارَ Allah connected and he attached warning with understanding Amazement is to see somebody who's warning, who's telling the people stay away from something, or who's saying this isn't right, but he himself doesn't have the fiqh of the religion. He doesn't understand that which Allah has commanded and his messenger. He also doesn't understand that which Allah and his messenger have prohibited. فَقَارَنَا الْإِنْذَارَ بالفق. For you to warn have something with you first. فَاقِدُ شَيْءٍ لَا يُعْطِيهِ One who doesn't have something can't give. One who doesn't have, who doesn't have can't give. So before you warn and you tell a person stay away from this or stay away from that, have understanding of that particular aspect. Have good understanding of it. A lot of the time, brothers and sisters, we, we see people who are being blamed. And they're being blamed of statements, speeches and actions which this person has done. But when we look into it very detailed and we analyse, we come to realise that the person who's being criticised isn't wrong. Rather he's right. 
But the one who's criticizing him, he lacks understanding. He lacks the comprehension that is needed. And the poet, he said, وَكَمْ مِنْ عَائِبٍ قَوْلًا صَحِيحًا وَآفَتُ مِنَ الْفَهْمِ السَّقِيمِ How many people who blame others, who criticize others in maybe their actions or even their speeches. But the problem isn't this individual you're criticizing. This person is fine. There's nothing wrong with them. But the problem is you. You lack the basic understanding that is needed. Whether it is this person, what they are saying, what do they mean by it? Or if it's the hukum shara'i, the jurisprudent ruling in this matter, you lack it. Ibn al Qayyim tells us, Rahimahullah, that he said, Su'ul fahmi anillahi wa rasuli. To have bad understanding of Allah and His Messenger is what? It is aslu kullu bid'ah. It is the foundation of every innovation wa dalala and every misguidance. Nash'at fil Islami that stemmed out, that came out within Islam. The asl, the fundamental reason why. Innovation and misguidance occurred is because bad understanding. This person doesn't have he doesn't have the ability to understand what Allah Tabarak wa Taala is saying. He lacks that which the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying. Ibn al Qayyim then goes on to say, "Bel rather, huwa aslu kullu khata." Every shortcoming. The reason goes back to su'ul fahm, bad understanding. Fil usuli, whether that shortcoming is in the fundamental matters of the religion or whether it's in al furu' the matters which are not fundamental. Wala in udifa ilayhi su'ul qasd. And the matter becomes even greater when bad intention is attributed to it. So the person had su'ul fahm. He couldn't understand. And then with that, he added onto it su'ul qasd. He has bad objectives. He has bad intention. Our brothers, who I can personally say, that they have a nasib, a portion of that which Imam Ibn al Qayyim said, Su'ul Fahmi and Su'ul Qasd. And as I said, both of them are going to become clear and it's all, it's all going to be seen, inshaAllah ta'ala, when I point, when I point to their statements, inshaAllah ta'ala. Ikhwani and akhawati, my brothers and sisters, Ignorance, it pushes the person to wulu. It per pushes the person to be extreme. al wulu means mujawazat al-had. The person passes the limits that were set for them. They exceed that limits. And our religion is a wasat. It's in the middle of all religions. The Christians... They refuse to affirm Nabiullah Musa and the Jews. They refuse to affirm Nabiullah Isa ibn Maryam. The Muslimin, they affirm both. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا The same as, or the way that Islam is a, mid, is a religion that is wasat, that is in the middle of all religions, Ahlu Sunnah, are in the middle of all the deviated sects. Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah said, Ahlu sunnah fil Islam ka ahl al-Islam fil milal. Ahlu sunnah are in the religion of Islam. Ahlu sunnah are in Islam. The way that Ahlu al-Islam are towards the groups. Meaning, 
the way that Muslims are in the middle when it comes to all of those deviated religions who are all upon misguidance and kufr and ilhad the same way Ahlul Sunnah is when it comes to these deviated sects whether you look at the Khawarij whether you look at the Murji'ah whether you look at the Mu'tazila whether you look at the Jahmiyyah whether you look at the Sha'ira whether you look at the Qadariyyah Wahalumma Jarra the list goes on and for a person to become extreme and go outside that boundary Ahlul Sunnah were within which is wasat, to be in the middle. A person, he leaves that and he falls into being extreme with two reasons. The first one is al-jahl, ignorance. Ignorance pushes the person to what? To become extreme. So the person becomes extreme in a takfir by labeling people kufr, kafir, kafir, kafir. And the second thing is a tabdi'ah, mubtadi'ah, mubtadi'ah, mubtadi'ah. Ignorance will push you to it. Wadhulm, oppression, transgression. Dhulm will push you to what? When your extre extremism stands on those two, ignorance and oppression. And they both push you to what? To do takfir easily. Or to do tabdi' easily. Ibn Abi Shayba narrated in his Musannaf that Ali ibn Abi Talib he said, Khayrun nasi, the best of people are Hadha Namatul Awsat. Those people who are in the middle. Yalhaqu bihim tali wa yarji' ilayhim al ghali. The one whose shorts can easily catch up with them. And the one who's gone far and extreme can easily come back to them. They're in the middle. The one who hasn't reached and is short, they are able to catch up with Ahlul Sunnah. And the ones who've gone extreme are also able to come back and catch up with them, uh, go and meet them. Those are the best people, he said, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Hassan al Basri, he said, Sunnatukum wallahi alladhi la ilaha illa hu Bayna al-ghali wal-jafi Your sunnah I swear by the Lord that there is none worthy of worship except him is between what? It's between extreme by going overboard or by coming short That is your sunnah Hassan al-Basri rahimahullah said that Al-Imam Al-Awza'i, Imam Ahl al-Sham. He said, Ma amar Allah Ta'ala, Allah has an ordered. Bi amrin ay mata, illa walish shaytani fihi nazghatan. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, he has not ordered a mata. Whether it may be tabdi'ah, or takfir, or taking a person into Islam, or taking them out of it. All of these are ahkam shari'ah. They are Islamic terms. If it's placed in the right place, it is that which Allah has commanded. If a person who doesn't deserve it is being given it, is also something that Allah Taala isn't pleased with. Ma amar Allah Taala, Allah hasn't ordered. Bi amrin aymata, illa walish shaytani fihi nazghatan. Except shaytan, he paves one of two paths from it. Whenever Allah commands a matter, shaitan comes and he makes one of two paths from it. The first one is imma ila tafriitin wa taqsir. Either he pushes it to the person becoming short in the matter and not to fulfill as he should do. Wa imma o ila mujawazatin wa ghulu that the person exceeds the limits and he goes beyond. وَلَا يُبَالِي Shaytan doesn't care بِأَيِّهِ مَا ظَفِرْ Shaytan doesn't care which of those two he throws you into. He doesn't care. So brothers and sisters, 
When a person is ignorant of the religion of Allah, and oppression is in him, and that is something that is created in the children of Adam, all of them. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, he said, إِنَّهُ كَانَ ظَلُومًا جَهُولًا أَيِّ الْإِنسَانِ The human being, two things are present in him. Valum and he's jahul. He's oppressive and he's also ignorant. The person who studies the religion, who understands that which Allah wa ta'ala commands and that which Allah prohibits and that which the messenger commands and that which the Prophet prohibited, they would remove those two from themselves as time goes on. And the more they study, the more their ignorance becomes less and the more their knowledge grows and the lesser their oppression becomes and the more they become just. And based on those two, which is ignorance and oppression, Ibn Taymiyyah mentions to us that it causes people to transgress on one another or to wrong each other. Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, قَدْ يَبْغِي قَدْ يَبْغِي بَعْضُ الْمُسْتَنَّةِ إِمَّا عَلَى بَعْضِهِمْ وَإِمَّا عَلَى نَوْعٍ مِّنَ الْمُبْتَدِعَةِ بِزِيَادَةٍ عَلَى مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ وَهُوَ الْإِسْرَافُ الْمَذْكُورُ فِي قَوْلِهِمْ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا ذُنُوبَنَا وَإِسْرَافَنَا فِي أَمْرِنَا Ibn Taymiyyah said, some of the people of the Sunnah may transgress. قَدْ يَبْغِي بَعْضُ الْمُسْتَنَّةِ Some of the people of the Sunnah may transgress. إِمَّا عَلَى بَعْضِهِمْ Either on themselves وَإِمَّا عَلَى نَوْعٍ مِّنَ الْمُبْتَدِعَةِ Or even they may go extreme on some of the innovators بِزِيَادَةِ By going overboard عَلَى مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ In that which Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has commanded and that is وَهُوَ الْإِسْرَافُ الْمَذْكُورِ and it is the israf that was mentioned in the statement of Allah رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا Oh Allah forgive us for what? ذُنُوبَنَا our shortcomings وَإِسْرَافَنَا us exceeding our limits في أمرنا in our affairs so this israf Ibn Taymiyyah says it falls under transgressing even on the innovator and that is not permissible let alone a person of the sunnah who is from the what? من خواص أهل السنة who is probably from the elite people of أهل السنة to just open your tongue and to say he left the sunnah he's an innovator one has to be scared of that Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah, he told us how to cure those two problems, which is al-jahlu, ignorance, and al-zulm, oppression. Ibn Taymiyyah said, وَأَئِمَّةُ السُنَّةِ The leaders of the sunnah, the imams of the sunnah, وَالْجَمَاعَةِ and the, and the jama'ah, وَأَهْلُ الْعِلْمِ وَالْإِيمَانِ And the people of knowledge, and the people of iman, فِيهِمُ adl Sorry, فيهم العلم In them is knowledge والعدل And they are just والرحمة And they are very merciful So you see the opposite To knowledge is ignorance And the opposite to adl is jahl uh, Sorry, is dhulm So the people of the sunnah The people of ilm and iman They have overcome those two problems They have knowledge with them And they also are just and then Ibn Taymiyyah said, وَالرَّحْمَةِ They're very merciful. فَيَعْلَمُونَ They know الْحَقَّ الَّذِي يَكُونُونَ بِهِ مُوَافِقِينَ لِلسُّنَّةِ سَالِمِينَ مِنَ الْبِدْعَةِ They know that truth in which that truth will make them in accordance to the sunnah. That would save them from the bid'ah. They know what truth it is. 
they're aware where that truth is, so it can protect them from falling into innovation and being in agreement towards the Sunnah. They know it. They're very knowledgeable of it. And also, وَيَعْدِلُونَ And they are just عَلَى مَنْ خَرَجَ مِنْهَا And they're also just on those who go outside the Sunnah. They are just. وَلَوْ ظَلَمَهُمْ Even if they oppress them. كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى As Allah said, كُونُوا بِي قَوَّامِينَ Those who stand لِلَّهِ Stand for Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Shuhada'a bil qist. Witnesses of justice. Wa la yajrimannakum shana'anu qawmin ala alla ta'adilu. And do not let a hate, an enmity you have for a people, to what? To not be just. Ala alla ta'adilu. I'adilu. Huwa aqrabu li taqwa. Wa taqwa Allah. Inna Allah khabiru bima ta'amalun. Don't let a hate you have for a people prevent you from being just. Be just. It is closest to piety. And have taqwa of Allah. For verily Allah is khabir. He's aware of every action which you do. Ibn Taymiyyah said, وَيَرْحَمُونَ الْخَلْقِ They are very merciful to the creation. فَيُرِيدُونَ لَهُمْ They want for them. الخيرة, they want good for them. والهدى والعلم They want guidance and they want knowledge for everyone. We want خير for everyone. We want guidance for everyone. We want knowledge for everyone. لا يقصدون الشر لهم ابتداء أهل السنة do not want evil to afflict anybody. That is not their objective. That isn't their goal and that is not what they look for. Rather, that is in opposition to the methodology and the path of Ahlul Sunnah. To want harm for your opponent. And it's also in opposition to the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah to be an oppressor. And it also is in opposition to the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah to make ignorance your base. So you've got ignorance. You are oppressive and you have no mercy. Ahl Sunnah were what? Al ilm wal adl wal rahmah. And I ask every student of knowledge that they take the statement of Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah and that you hold on to it in the course of your years of studying the religion. And that you place it for e nusbi aynaik. You place it right in front of your eyes, somewhere where you can always see which is to always nurture yourself with knowledge, to always nurture yourself with being just, and to always nurture yourself to being one who is very merciful. The knowledge which you have, Ibn Taymiyyah says to you, it has to be what? A knowledge that allows you to know where the haq is. The haq that will allow you to be in accordance to the sunnah, prevent you from the innovation. The second thing is what? For you to be just. To the person who goes against the sunnah, to be fair. Not to say about him that which he didn't say. Not to go into his heart and start to say this is what he meant by it or this is why he did it. And the third one is to be very merciful to the creation. And to want for them good. And to want guidance and knowledge to reach them. And that you don't want Allah wa Taala to give them except that.